Okay, so I wanted to do this quick video on the iPad, uh, which can be done on iOS. Can't be done on iOS, rather. I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. I wanted to do this on the iPad because it can't be done on the iPhone because Harmony Bloom is only on the iPad currently. Hopefully, I did mention this to the dev, if he could add it to the iPhone, it would be incredible. Um, because if you think about it, there's not like you're going in here doing a ton of adjustments. Most of the time, you're just trying to find something that sounds good and you just want to be able to use it in AUM to create. Um, if you're in a DAW like Cubasis, it would work too. Um, but on the iPhone, it's not, I mean, outside of maybe AEM, Cubasis, and maybe... What was the other one? Maybe Intrack. I think that's about the only DAWs that you have access to that I can think of right now. There may be some others and that's fine. But the point is you don't have access to all the the apps that are on the app store. Um, so sometimes that can be a little annoying, but it is what it is. It makes sense that some wouldn't be on there because of how much screen real estate and space they take up. It would be kind of challenging. But AUM is on there. Koala is on there. And it would be nice to see this app. Now, I'm, I put together just something that I thought sounded pretty good. But what I thought was cool was sampling it into Koala and then chopping it up again and playing it back. Because it's a sampler and that's what you should do. Right? So I'm just going to select the pad. And it shouldn't pick up my voice, so we should be okay. Um, let me take it out of import and go back to record from input. All right, I'm going to se select the pad and just press play. And I'm watching the bar count at the top until I get about eight bars and then I'm going to stop it. So on the initial crop, I usually do that first. I'm gonna chop it right there. You know, there's a feature since I'm on this matter. I'm gonna grab the mouse. It would be cool, and I've said this before, it would be nice in here, kind of like the SP, to be able to set the length of the, um, the loop prior so that it automatically cuts at that point so we don't have to go in and do so much extra editing um it's not that it takes forever to edit it but sometimes you could be a slight bit off on the bar length and there is a workaround but why we got to have so many workarounds all the time um sometimes we just want to quick something that's easy right and we don't have to do a bunch of workarounds Here's the workaround, just in case you want to know. You could set up a, like if you know this is eight bars, right? You could set up this sequence to have eight bars. Okay, make sure you're on the right one. And then extend it out all the way, see, to the eight bars. And then all you have to do is click resample loop. Didn't do it. <laughs> Click on this one. Did it resample it somewhere else? Nope. Click on this. Click resample loop. There it is. You notice that it changes the volume. So I noticed this uh, on the desktop too. So it must have some type of limiter on it. Maybe perhaps to keep it from clipping. Um, and I said this on desktop too. Just do that, and now you got it close to where you had it. If you want to make a perfect type copy, take one and lower the volume just a little bit, then put the mix on top. And now that's pretty close to this one. So we'll get rid of this, 
Give her that. And I'm guessing on volume. I'm looking at the wave and I'm guessing. Okay, so anyway, I don't have it precise. And I don't like doing the normalize because then it, you can't get it back. It's not like I can undo the normalize. Speaking of undos, it would be cool to have an undo on the on that type of stuff. We do have it on the sequencer where you can undo if you make a mistake in the sequencer, but nothing on the pads here. So anyway, just a thought. So now you have your perfect eight bar loop. You know it's that. Maybe you could just go ahead and get rid of the other one. That's the trick workaround to getting a perfect loop. It's a few extra steps, not too, too bad, but imagine if you could just do it right into this one, set it for four bars, it, you know, stops recording at the four. Anyway, just a thought. All right, moving on. Now you can go in and rename your loop, which I always suggest to do. Um, HB sample. Uh, keys. All right. So So you could do this a few ways. You could go tools auto chop do equals maybe. Set these to choke group maybe 2. I'm personally not going to chop this sample. I'm actually going to leave it because I thought it sounded pretty cool with the beat. Now, here's how I made that. I picked some samples, right? I put the beat in prior. Well, I made this first in Harmony Bloom. I came up with the idea of just circulate. Then I did my drums while it was playing into a sequence, which you can see right here. Of course, I don't have the SP hook to this, so I had to manually go in and adjust these velocities. And I showed you guys this in a previous video. That if you click here, let's say you want to do the kicks. He, Merrick, added in velocity. So I suggest if you got one uh, sample, and this pad is, you can see how much space he gave you. That's my phone. Um, so go ahead and just use that if you want to get your velocity changes in without having to worry about it. Anyway, that's just one way. But that's only good if you do everything separate the way I record. If you do everything together and you want to It ain't gonna work, okay? Unless you have an SP or you have, um, or you, I don't know how she would do that. <laughs> I guess you would just, you know, there is a way, and I've shown this, and I'm not gonna do this right now, but in past videos, that um, tonality, this is sidetrack. See how quickly I get sidetracked on something? Anyway, tonality can do an empty four by four, and then you can, edit these and you can pick chords if you wanted to or not. So let's say you pick this, you want to put a color in there. Now I'm not going to sit here and do this, but you could pick a pad. I'm just going to pick this. Oh no, create custom pad. I hadn't done this in a while. And this pad is going to be a note, right? So it would have to core, have to um, work. Let's say like tonality or not tonality. Um, uh, Koala is on C1. So then you'd want to press C1 and then maybe put, I don't know, kick. Done. And then you could edit it if you wanted to, but we don't need to edit it. Now it's a kick, right? Then you would just go into tonality. I mean tonality into koala. And press the chord pad. 
and it should, if this is C1, let's see if it's set. MIDI map. Okay, MIDI map. This is set up on C1, perfect, stop mapping. You should be able to touch here. And I'm pretty sure I put this on C1. Maybe it's not registered on C1, so maybe C2. We'll just try it out. There it is. So you can see there's a MIDI thing. So we'll say C2 is C1 technically. All right, let's do another one. We'll do a create a custom. And then on C, what do we say it was? C2, right? So now that one is gonna become the snare. Now I'm just showing you this, you could do this. Then I'm gonna do another create custom and we're gonna go to C3. And I'll show you why I'm doing this in the first place, but let's just label this hat. You could build your own if you want with more pads if you want to. I'm not worried about that right now. All right, so here we have velocity. Look at this, bottom to the top or left to the right. I'm gonna go left to right because these are rectangular. See, so now you have, all right. So let's go in here. We're gonna get on a different sequence with one bar, turn that on. And then you wanna open up tonality. Sorry, that's my hand rubbing the, I'm gonna turn on a click track, put it on pre-roll. Now watch this, you have velocity. See, right here, kick, it's already adjusted for you. If you mess up, you could, like I did, just, right? Then you want your hats on a velocity too, like change, watch this. We shall go back in and add the hats now. Here we go. with the velocity changes. Quick, right? Turn the record off. Let's turn the metronome off because it'll drive us crazy. And in the newer version, which is not on iOS yet, there is a bypass button, which is so cool. Can't wait for them to drop the release for you guys. But when you get that bypass button, you don't have to go in and disable anything. It's just press the bypass and it won't run while you're playing the rest track. So like, I'm gonna have to turn that off for you to better hear what's going on here. So let's do, oh man, my stomach's saying I need to eat, but I already ate. Anyway, <laughs> let's do this. This has to be eight bars for it to work. So we'll double up. There we go, that's eight bars, perfect. Now we'll play it in here. Oops. Should be on this sequence. Why is it not playing? Oh, I know why, stop. Because I have that pre-roll on. So that's why, you gotta turn that off. There it is. I mean, you know. So, what you can do is, if you, I'm not gonna do it right now, but.
is you could create yourself a loop. Maybe not there. You find a spot where you feel like it loops. I don't know, everybody's gonna figure it out, but I'm just showing you how you could use it even with Koala and put a beat over it and find some sound in there. Now, you could have it running technically in the back. I'm gonna put this one on. And then adjust. So my suggestion to, for those that struggle with hearing the um, the loop, like usually if you work in sample-based stuff, you kind of can hear what spot needs to be what and where you need to chop and just make a beat in Koala. It could be one bar, it could be two bars, four bars, whatever. Have it playing in AUM, right? And just play this. Use the button now here on and off, right? That's it right there. Or use your keyboard if you have one. And just let it play while the beat is going and then adjust little parts. Not a lot, just a little. Like I can tell you this, there's 12 notes in an octave, right? So look at the notes over here, 12 notes. I set the scale and I just picked whatever note collection I wanted, okay? Then I put that on and adjusted the probability so it wouldn't be 100% every time it's gonna hit every note. Then I set the length. Of course, the tempo was set by the host. Set the frame down here of what you wanna do. And then leave the speed and offset alone initially until you find the sweet spot or something that you want. Then you can play and adjust. They do have an undo and redo, so if you make a mistake on something, just hit one of these two. And use the offset, the um, the quantize offset. So this is quantize, and this is free offset. So they kind of can work together. You can have it somewhat quantized at a certain thing, but then slightly off too, so that it has some type of... Um, Feel, I'm gonna call it for lack of a better word or vibe uh, going on so try to think about those things like if you're using a guitar technically probably the max notes you're gonna play at a time is probably like six maybe so maybe just use six notes instead of using 12 or maybe use seven notes I don't know just think about the instrument What's in an octave? Then if you want to get wild with it, that's easy to do. But I'm talking about if you're trying to make something more um, tamed and um, catered toward something that feels somewhat natural, I guess you might say, then you could do that. Okay? So that's just showing you how you could put it in here with a beat. I even added in a little bonus feature of using... Here, so you get the velocities. So you can create that, it's pretty simple. If you need to rewind and check that little portion of the video out, I would highly suggest it, because Tonality offers you the on-screen velocity changes. Remember, it's in the three dots. You can do bottom to the top or left to the right. And use it as an instrument. It can be used in other ways too, but this is just one way. Okay. Oh, and by the way, in case you were wondering if this bores you looking at these colors down here in this corner where you can see my mouse right here. 
but I'm going to do it with my hand only because if you hold down this, you can pick colors. So let's say I want that kick to be red, done. I want the snare to be blue, done. And I want to change the hat to orange, done. So now you have some colors. Right? If you need more space, just press this little button right here. Push the piano out of the way. Right? Especially if you're using this on an iPhone and you want to get the velocities. What's up, little pup? She's <laughs> She just wants to be pet. She's like, I'm the pet. All right. Well, let me go so I can get back to what I'm supposed to be doing. And I just wanted to show you guys that. Um, if you need more volume on the velocity, it's right here. It's a little slider. So you can adjust it accordingly. Right. All right. That's it for this video. And I'm out.